Hello everyone and welcome back to DeFi Central. In today's video, I'm going to be covering some of the fundamentals that are behind the technology of decentralized finance. And um, I found a few articles here that, exp that um, explain well what blockchain technology is exactly and, um, and it explains the technology behind um, cryptocurrency and um, basically the applications behind blockchain and how that ties together. Um, I'm going to be covering basically where the money comes from and how crypto coins are generated on the blockchain. And uh, basically I'll be covering um, cryptocurrency mining and um, basically how um, coins are generated through mining. So, um, so that all that can make sense I will start with what blockchain technology is and um, and um, this this is basically what I am a believer in and uh, why I know that um, this technology is only gonna get bigger and it's uh, it's definitely here to stay so um, what is blockchain um, when you ask this question to one of the big guys already in the system here's what you would get as a definition. Um, blockchain is a digital immutable ledger of transactions that gets duplicated and distributed across the entire network of computers. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first heard this definition, it was all so foreign to me, and I felt I could never understand the system. But here I am today, telling you in details what this means, a clear sign that you can understand it too. It gets easier when you understand the meaning of terms used in the definition. So, digital ledger. It's a collection of records where transactions are being stored. Immutable means the information stored on the system cannot be changed or tampered with, hence it is permanent. With these terms explained, let's, let us give blockchain an easier definition. Blockchain is an ever-growing digital ledger that keeps a permanent record of all transactions that take place on the network in a secure and chronological order. Did this sink in in better than one? What the fuck? Did this sink in better than the first one? Now that we know the definition of blockchain, let us see some other unique characteristics that has made it quickly adopted today. Features of blockchain. We have seen that blockchain is immutable and is a digital ledger. There are some other interesting things it has. Um, let us briefly see them. One, it is decentralized. This simply means that blockchain is not controlled by one individual or group of individuals. No company or country owns the blockchain. All the information on the blockchain is stored in different computers all across the network. These computers are referred to as nodes, and these nodes are not controlled by any particular individual or group of individuals. One interesting thing about this feature is that it's the very reason why no country can ban the use of blockchain. They can only make it difficult to use in some cases but not impossible. So that's very, very important. Um, two. Um, use of cryptography. Now that's a big word. What is cryptography? It is a complex mathematical security that protects the blockchain, making it impossible to be counterfeited. Let's make it simpler by comparing it to our regular signatures we use at the bank. When you want to make a transaction at the bank you're registered with, you would put in your signature and your signature confirms that you're the true owner of the account and enables the transaction. In the same way, the cryptographic codes linked to your, linked to your blockchain wallet is unique to only you. 
this makes it impossible for others to access your wallet. Well, unless you give them access to it, of course. So cryptography secures your assets on the blockchain. Three, Conses consensus algorithm. To understand this term well, remember that the blockchain is being run by thousands of nodes all around the network. Each of the node is connected to every other node in the network. When a transaction is made, the information is sent to these nodes and they validate it and add it to the block of chains. For information to be accepted, ma um, majority of the nodes must validate it and the minority need to support the decision. With this feature, we can be sure that valid transactions will always go through. Benefits of blockchain. Taking a good look at the features of blockchain, you would agree that it has the following benefits. No third party authority is involved. It is fast. It is secure. It is efficient. It is reliable. Bitcoin and its connection to blockchain. The term Bitcoin is something that so many people have heard even if they ha even if they know nothing about blockchain. Probably you've heard it too long. Hold on. You've heard it probably you've heard it to a long you've heard it too a long time ago. What is Bitcoin? It is the very first coin currency produced on the blockchain system. Take note that a, ma uh, a major application of blockchain today is in cryptocurrency, of which Bitcoin is the, f is the very first coin. Bitcoin was made by Satoshi Nakamoto. He made it to serve as a digital form of money to enable transactions. Satoshi Nakamoto is anonymous till today. Nobody knows who he or she is. The surprising thing, though, is that despite that it has a creator, Bitcoin is controlled by no one. This is possible because of the cryptographic codes mentioned earlier. Let's focus more on the coin. You can think of Bitcoin as the money you have in your bank account. It can be used to buy things and even pay for services. However, in countries where cryptocurrency is banned, it might not be easy to use it for this purpose physically. But thanks to the internet, we live in a time where so many things can be done virtually. You can use your Bitcoin with ease on the internet. Now you might think, can I convert Bitcoin into cash? Of course you can. There's a simple process to, uh, to it wherever you are. I'll make a detailed article in the future on how um, to get that done. So conclusion. Um, now that you have amassed a good amount of knowledge on blockchain, the question that might be on your mind now is, how can I get started as a user on the blockchain space? Uh, okay, so this kind of just is not really worth mentioning, but what I should go back over is... Um, yeah, so that last part was a little bit pointless uh, so this this um, here's another example of what blockchain technology is and uh, how you can understand the technology behind cryptocurrencies so um, just skip that part so um, another example is in ancient times um, important and very delicate statements were usually written on a stone it is believed as at then that such information can be altered easily without being noticed. This meant permanent, fixed, or firmly established, incapable of being changed. Oftentimes, writing on a stone could be used in the negative. The deal isn't yet written in stone, but we're confident it will go ahead as hoped. Deals which can, writ um, deals which can be written on a stone include but not limited to obviously the king's proclamations commandments transactions between nations or kingdoms agreements truce and so on using uh, historical examples 
Um, so here we shall be considering transactions. Um, blockchain is like the stone on which the codes of cryptocurrency are written. Blockchain is a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult or impossible to change, hack, or cheat the system. Nodes and blocks are the mechanisms on which these information are written. Blockchain technology can be used to create permanent, public, transparent ledger systems for compiling data on sales, tracking, digital use, and payments to content creators such as wireless users or musicians. So who owns the blockchain? No single individual or organization owns the chain. Instead, instead, it is a distributed ledger via the nodes connected to the chain. Nodes here, nodes here we meant any kind of electronic device that maintains copies of the blockchain and keeps the network running. So I hope um, I hope I hope that that can be I hope that's understandable for um, for for all of you. Um, but this is very important having um, a um, more than decentralized, you know, a, a distributed ledger um, for us to run our. Uh, technology and our businesses that's 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 uh, revolutionary so um, there are different companies that have um, bought into the ideas which blockchain offers these includes uh, this includes but not limited to uh, webjet travel chain sandbox which is a uh, metaverse and a um, a ga basically a game an online game uh, Decentraland as well. It's a metaverse uh, online game that you you can it's it's out and you can play it uh, now. Um, so, uh, Boundless Pay um, is a fintech company, um, and there's a lot more um, apps that you use today that are built on the blockchain. So, um, a blockchain can record information about cryptocurrency transactions, NFTs. Um, NFT ownership or decentralized finance smart contracts, which I will be um, explaining further in um, in the following video. Um, so um, conclusively, blockchain isn't um, disruptive, but have come to help the traditional means of transactions. So um, I'll jump into this article now. So this might uh, make things a little bit more clear for you. So um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a term we hear a lot these days. Um, we all know that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, but do you know what concept or technology it is based on? It is the blockchain that made Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies possible. You may be wondering what it is and how it affects you. Um, don't worry, I'm here to help you. Let us formulate the definition from a developer's point of view to understand it later. So, um, blockchain, it is a decentralized, trustless, distributed, immutable, digital ledger that stores transactions or data. Here, the transactions or data are stored in the form of blocks that are linked to the previous block, hence the name blockchain. Basic terms in the blockchain. Digital ledger. It is a database where data or transactions are stored. Immutable. The ledger in a blockchain are immutable, meaning they cannot be changed once they are stored. Distributed. Data is stored on multiple computers on the network or on nodes that verify the data. Trustless. 
parties do not have to trust each other, but the blockchain mechanism is based on consensus algorithms such as proof of work, proof of stake, etc. Decentralized? There is no third party involvement, i.e. no central authority, and thus everyone has equal say. And that is something I'm a very big fan of. So here, um, let me give you a little diagram about um, um, about um, blockchain technology. So um, here in uh, blue, uh, blockchain enables the near real-time settlement of recorded transactions, removing friction and reducing risk. Uh, blockchain is based on cryptographic proof instead of trust allowing any two parties to transact directly with each other without the need for a trusted third party. So meaning um, you don't need to wait for your bank to verify the transaction of funds. And um, the peer-to-peer -peer, um, distributed network records a public history of transactions. The blockchain is distributed and highly available. The blockchain does not typically preserve the identities. Only the proof of transaction, um, only the proof of transactions exist. Only the proof of transaction exists. Whatever. The blockchain contains certain and verifiable records. Hold on. The blockchain contains certain and verifiable record records of every single transaction ever made this this ob obviates the past blocks from being altered and in turn stops double spending fraud i'll read that again the blockchain contains certain and verifiable records of every single transaction ever made. This obviates the past blocks from being altered and in turn stops double spending fraud. Um, stored procedures are executed in a blockchain to process predefined business steps and execute a commercially legally enforceable transaction without involvement of an intermediary so those are some features of blockchain um, cryptography and hashing are used in blockchain for digital signatures and many other purposes which increases privacy security and trust the working of blockchain is shown on the diagram below. So here, one um, A wants to send money to B. Two, the transaction is represented online as a block. Three, the block is broadcast to every party in the network. Four, those in the network approve the transaction is valid. Five, the block then can be added to the chain which provides an ind ind indelible and transparent record of transactions the money moves from a to b so all that happens uh, in a very short amount of time so blockchain is an emerging technology with many applications such as banking and finance supply chain elections healthcare insurance, user data ownership, etc. And many more applications are under development. So one, banking and finance. The very first application of blockchain was Bitcoin, which is used for payments. It made transactions between countries smooth and easy. Besides Bitcoin, there are many other cryptocurrencies in the market, um, such as Ethereum, Binance Coin, and so on. Um, blockchain can simply oh sorry blockchain can simplify banking and banks have realized this and are working on blockchain in banking icici bank is the first to do this in india 
Um, so supply chain management. In the blockchain, transactions are documented in a permanent decentralized record and monitored securely and transparently, reducing time delays, cost, and labor. It helps in easy verification of authenticity and fair trade status of products by tracking their origin. Um, three, voting. It can be used to store voters' data, verify them, and count their votes anonymously without being influenced by third parties and thus can increase the strength of democracy. 4. Healthcare. Storing and securing patient data is a major problem for hospitals, which can be solved by blockchain. It can also help patients by giving them ownership of their health reports, which is currently not the case. So that's huge. Um, five, insurance. The insurance industry is based on managing trust, and blockchain is a new way of managing trust between parties. So it can be used to verify many types of data in insurance contracts, such as personal identities or um, policyholders. It makes the insurance industry fast and secure. So that's another amazing feature. Um, six, um, ownership of your data. Big companies like Facebook, Amazon, and Google share their users' data. However, if the data were stored on the blockchain, the user would own his data and no one could sell or use it without his consent. But if he wants, he can share it and earn rewards. Blockchain increases privacy and security on the internet by giving users ownership of their data. Blockchain is still in its early stages and there is still a lot of um, still a lot to explore, but it will be a disruptive technology for the future. So that's pretty awesome right there. And um, I guess you could say one of the, well, I mean, these are all pretty important, but um, with a lot of uh, what's happening with social media, I think, you know, blockchain plus social media is going to be revolutionary. So um, another question that I notice a lot of people have when I discuss these types of topics, and um, this is this is a question that comes up a lot. It's basically, where does the money come from? So um, how crypto coins are generated on the blockchain. So here's a little meme. Uh, money doesn't grow on trees. It grows on the blockchain. So more and more blockchain-based tools, apps, and websites are coming into existence that allow users to get financially incentivized. Many of them do this in an effort to push mainstream adoption of crypto, but the very first skeptical and understandable question the mainstream has, of course, is where does the money come from? So uh, basically in this post, uh, we'll be looking at... Uh, three different blockchain examples, Bitcoin, Dash, and uh, Steam. Um, so first is Bitcoin, which is the most popular and the most, um, well, the first one. So uh, Bitcoin is not only the most known crypto uh, cryptocurrency, it was also the first one and basically how this whole decentralized money thing was invented. Um, maybe you've heard of Bitcoin miners, Miners, as in gold mining, they're not really miners, they're actually bookkeepers. Because all they do all day is verify and validate transactions. They are also not people, but computers owned by people. Besides validating transactions, they also build the actual blocks on the blockchain. So they do actual work and keep things safe and running. For this work, they are being rewarded. This method is called proof of work. They are being paid transaction fees for every transaction they process, and they receive a certain amount of brand new bitcoins as a reward for every block they create. So the pseudo, the um, pseudo, um, uh, pseudonymous. 
the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, coded into the Bitcoin blockchain how many Bitcoins will ever be available, 21 million to be exact. It was also written into the blockchain in which amounts and intervals they will be made available. Right now, it's 12.5 Bitcoins per block. Blocks are created every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, the blockchain spits out 12.5 Bitcoins and awards it to the miner who created the last block. This is how Bitcoins are generated and enter the circulating supply. So that's one example. Another example is uh, Dash, Dash Cash, Digital Cash. Uh, so Dash is another cryptocurrency and works very similar to Bitcoin. However, the Dash miners only receive 45% of the block rewards. Another 45% go to so-called uh, master nodes, which also do important work for the Dash network. But they do not mine. Um, in order to run a master node, one must prove ownership of a thousand Dash and lock them up. This method is called proof of stake. Together, this makes 90% of the block reward. 90% of the block reward. This leaves 10% which go into a virtual pot, also called the treasury, from which all sorts of activities and initiatives are paid, whether it's blockchain developers, marketing campaigns, or anyone who wants to contribute in some way to the growth of the Dash network. So while the original Dash coins are mined through proof-of-work mechanisms, the total block reward gets paid out through a mix of proof of work, proof of stake, and let's call it proof of contribution. Um, so 45% to miners, 45% to master nodes, 10% to value contributors. So that's one uh, different example of how um, coins are generated through the blockchain. So Steam uses a uh, different... Um, 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 how can you say a different type of uh, method, I guess you could say. So on Steamit.com, a social media platform on the Steam blockchain, users reward each other financially through upvotes. However, the money that goes to a content creator doesn't come out of your own pocket. Just like on the Bitcoin blockchain, it is being mined. And just like on the Dash blockchain, the new coins do not go 100% to the miners, but are distributed in a mix of proof of stake and proof of contribution. So 10% um, go to the go to the witnesses, the equivalent to miners who basically power the Steam blockchain. 75% of the new tokens go to the reward pool, from which authors and curators. Um, uploaders are paid. 15% um, are rewarded to holders of Steam Power. So, when you as a Steam user upvote someone else's content, you're basically saying to the reward pool, give some Steam to this author. As an upvoter, you will also receive a kickback from the total revenue of the post you upvoted. In addition, if you save your earned Steam in your Steam Power Wallet, you will also be receiving interest on that. See the 15% above. So um, basically, this is how money is being generated on different blockchains. Those are just three different examples, and there are um, hundreds of different examples. Um, so um, there are many different methods besides proof of work and proof of stake. But I hope this answers your most important question. Where does the money come from? Um, as a crypto beginner, I recommend... Uh, uh, anyway, it's just a bunch of shillings. So, yeah. So, um, let's jump over to uh, continue um, cryptocurrency mining. Um, so... Um, So, um, the method by which Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are generated 
and the transactions involving new coins are verified is known as, mar as mining. It entails massive decentralized networks of computers all over the world that verify and safeguard blockchains, which are virtual ledger ledgers that record crypto transactions. Computers on the network are rewarded with fresh coins in exchange for contributing their processing power. It's a virtuous circle. Miners keep the blockchain secure. The blockchain rewards coins, and the coins the coins incentivize miners to keep the network secure. So what is the process of mining cryptocurrency? Crypto mining has two goals. It generates new cryptocurrency and it verifies the authenticity of existing cryptocurrency transactions on the blockchain. A miner is reimbursed after they complete the process of confirming a block of transactions. And what do they get in return? Newly produced cryptocurrencies to boost their wallets. So, um, okay, so I'll just continue reading here. How to mine cryptocurrencies. Um, anyone with a competent home computer could mine cryptocurrencies a decade ago. However, as the blockchain has grown, so has the processing power necessary to keep it running. As a result, Almost all mining is now carried out by specialized firms or groups of people pooling their resources. The calculations required to confirm and record each new crypto, trans crypto transaction as well as secure the, blockchain secu the blockchain's security are performed by specialized computers. The blockchain requires a lot of computer power to validate. Companies buy mining equipment Oh, sorry. Companies buy mining equipment and pay for the electricity that keeps it functioning. The value of the mined coins must be greater than the cost of mining those coins for this to be profitable, obviously. So why do cryptocurrencies need to be mined? Mining is used to create new coins as well as validate its existing transactions. The decentralized nature of the blockchain could allow fraudsters to spend cryptocurrencies more than once, at the same time, if no one authenticated transactions, mining reduces such fraud and increases user confidence in the coin. So, um, so, um, so, so that covers um, basically blockchain fundamentals and uh, mining and how the coins are generated. Um, so this is very new technology and um obviously um whatever we're seeing today um will not necessarily be what um comes of it um in the future so basically as an example you know um AOL had to exist um, in order for Google um, to to become what it is, I guess you could say. So um, so all these technologies are um, very early, and it's really the beginning of this type of technology. But as I um, explained in other um, in these posts in these posts here, um, basically how. Uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain technology ties into the real world and how it can actually solve real world world problems and that's why I'm a believer in this technology um, so like I said before um, by banking and finance finance um, supply chain management even more importantly voting um, it can be used to store voters' data, verify them, and count their votes anonymously without being influenced by third parties. That's amazing. And uh, also for healthcare, this is something that, that's severely needed. And um, for storing and securing patient data, um, and um, basically it can help patients uh, by giving them ownership of their health reports, uh, which is currently not the case. Again, for insurance and uh, for ownership of your data um, because right now you know all the social media platforms we're using 
uh, basically have ownership over all of our uh, data. So, um, so, so those are just six examples of um, how this technology um, ties into real world problems and how it um, can um, fix um, real world issues. So, um, so I guess that's enough for today on blockchain. And um, in my next video, I'm going to be covering um, smart contracts and how that um, ties into blockchain and uh, decentralized finance. So um, I will thank uh, each and every one of you for watching. And um, I hope that was um, easy enough to understand. And um, obviously, you can continue um, researching if it interests you um, because um, this uh, technology is not going away. There's just so much uh, being developed and uh, there's so much money being poured into this, um, this um, sector. So um, I can only see it, uh, not just, it's not just my opinion, um, you know, um, um, everybody um, that is a, uh, everybody that's, um, you know, into um, technology um, is aware that blockchain technology is um, is the future. So, uh, so that's enough said for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and um, look out for my next video about smart contracts. And um, again, thank you very much for watching.